I'd love to, to ask you to speak to your history of, of working, making, and leading institutions. Certainly, you and Arnie created one. You've worked with presenters in my other role as well, funders. You've created New York Live Arts. How have you found the journey between your, your work as a maker versus your work as a leader? First of all, you have to realize that the world that I come from, I remember year back in the day, Arnie was still alive, and there was a thing um, from the NEA. You ever remember this moment? What was it called? The, there, was, there was challenge grant, and then there was pre-challenge grant. <laughs> and uh, it, what was it called? It, anyways, at that advancement, yes. You know where the bodies are buried, don't you, right? So <laughs> we, uh, we were actually like, the hell with this institution thing. Institution's the death of art. That's when, you, that's when you're a young Turk and you're gonna burn the house down. That's how we well felt if you were a serious artist, you should not be in any institution. Fast forward. <laughs> right? Fast forward and now you have people who depend on you, you have a budget, you have a board of directors, you have um, maybe some, some standing. Um, that was the Bill T as a choreographer. Right. And, uh, and incidentally, I know I say not choreographer first, I say director first, ah, right? Right, right, right. But um, then the New York Live Arts was an opportunity to have a home. And uh, that's what motivated it. We were merging with the, another legacy organization. And when I came in, I have been the exec, I've been the artistic director of the company, and now I'm the artistic director. Uh, it confused funders. Many of them were like, well, we don't know. Like, if a, if a grant comes in from New York Live Arts and a grant comes in from you, well, who are we funding? So everyone got over the jitters. Um, I have a really first-rate staff. But there is still that, that tension between, am I selfless enough? I'm assuming people in your position, administrators, have to have a certain degree of selflessness. Artists do not. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. And I'm the one that started this. But you know, art should be dangerous and art should not be easy to control. Mm -hmm. Artists, we, we use, we're using words like service and so on. I don't know. I, I say it. And matter of fact, it's been put on my doorstep that I made art utilitarian because I wanted to address social issues. But artists are not obliged to do anything. Well, OK. So I have a slightly different viewpoint. Um, Good. So I am the first generation to be born after the change of the immigration policy. So as an Asian American, I was born and raised in essentially a farm town an hour away from Chicago. And it was like we were an alien family that had landed. And there was no sense of community, none. It was just like you are these weird, what are you? <laughs> Basically, what are you? Um, so I think my entire life, which includes music, has been about building community because I did not have that growing up. So it's about building a community of musicians, building a community of friends, building a community of artists. So when I use the word service, it is in a very sincere way. However, that does not mean that we're not disrupting the model. And I think one of the things that I'm most proud of is being able to advocate for musicians and composers that had no space um, previously. Um, and I find them, or I do a lot of research and I find the ones that are, are most compelling to me. Um, and then a few years later, they get the MacArthur. <laughs> um, and, but I am proud of the fact that I can advocate. Um, and that's, so I'm within a system, because otherwise I couldn't function as a performer um, because I'm freelance and I have to buy my own health insurance. Um, so, so I work within the structures that exist, and I hope to blow it up from within and change it from within. I can say a little bit about the ways that I think about community. I was raised in a family and a community where community and family were the same. I grew up on a reservation. Um, we all know the history of reservations. You know, they were not a place that we're supposed to produce somebody sitting here 
in front of you next to these artists and advocates for art. Um, it, it's one of the reasons why I think being an artist feels dangerous to me. And I don't even mean for what I can produce, but I think it's for what I might compromise. And I think that's, to me, as I'm, you know, I'm now part of an institution, I'm part of a university. Um, I'm, I'm starting a center within the university for um, uh, looking for new shapes to express what it means to exist in a borderlands, what it means to have an imagination in a borderlands, whether that's on res, off res, US-Mexico border, uh, Palestine, Pakistan. Um, and so I think it feels dangerous to me because, and, and in a way, uh, a lot of you out here are in that same relationship of danger with me because as much as I want to resist, the institutions and systems need me to resist a certain amount so that they can continue to grow and become themselves. And so I'm really interested in this relationship we have with one another. And what does it mean for me then to move from something that might be activism to create an art that is then consumed or commodified? Um, so how do we keep this anger or rage or edge or some of the, the ways we've, uh, we're all thinking about it I think very differently. Um, <clears throat> But at the same time, and, and you know, uh, Bill, you had said, like, uh, like when I said my language, like, I am, I am American. I, I am also Mojave. I am something else. I am something more. And so it's, it's interesting for me to, to, ha to be forced to think from before the beginning. That's always where I have to start from, before the beginning. There was a before America, be there was a before an institution, and yet I am very much American. I am as American as anybody else in the room. Um, and so my imagination is also American. And so for me, the, the, the crucible that I am in right now is how do I maintain being an artist and inquiring with rigor and intention and then how do I also operate within the institution? Uh, I don't believe I can blow up the institution. It actually is not a goal of mine, mm -hmm. but how do I create a conversation across that chasm that is not agreement, that is not solution, that is not conversion, but that says we have to exist in attention so that we can all exist simultaneously. Um, and so that is one of the ways that I am thinking about what an institution means to me, what it means to operate outside of it, and the fact that we all have to simultaneously uh, be in all of these places and all of these possibilities at, at once. I don't know how to do that, um, but those are my questions when I'm thinking alongside you all about these things.